So because I tend to get like oilier here and here, I want something to yeah keep this part of my face matte. They're gone, but ugh, oh. That is not nice. Wait, is this the one that I thought it was gonna be? Oh my God, this is the hydrating primer. What am I doing? I thought I was putting the matte one on. No, <laughs> that backfired. I can feel this peeling too. Look, we've come this far. I guess I'm gonna have hydrated skin today. And because I don't have tan on and I don't want a full coverage, I'm gonna use the Mecca Cosmetica Weekend Skin Hydra Skin Tint. This is in the shade um, Ivory 0, 0.0. What brush do I want? I need to buy some more makeup. I haven't bought makeup in a while. Anyway, I wanted to talk about, would you ever go back to doing like first impressions and makeup looks on YouTube? Yeah, I think I should. I just don't know if people will watch them, but I mean, I guess I could just try and see what happens. It was probably a little bit easier to do those because when I was like on the PR lists because I was getting all of the newest collections as they came out. Here's an interesting topic. What does everyone think of the whole mascara gate thing? To be honest, when it first came out, I was like, I was interested in what was happening. And now that it's, I find that it's kind of like a really like vulture mentality of the internet when someone has stuffed up, like everyone takes it, just jumps on the bandwagon. And I think I've done that before. I think I've jumped on a bandwagon before. So I'm not saying that like I'm, getting, you know, I'm innocent of it, but now I'm still seeing people talking about it. I'm like, you guys are like beating a dead horse at this point. Can we just move on? I strongly disagree that what she, with what she did, I feel like. I really would have thought she would have been um, smarter than that. People would think it was deliberate because now everyone has gone out and bought it and created hype. I mean, that did cross my mind, but I'm like, you've got to be smarter than that because yeah, you might've created a viral moment for the brand, but like, are you going to sell, sell out and make so many of your viewers not trust you for a huge brand? Like you might do that for your own brand, but you're not going to do it for like L'Oreal. You know, I'm sure she wasn't paid that much. I mean, she, pro she probably would have been paid a lot, but not enough to like ruin her reputation. And people were saying that she says that she doesn't use skin filters, but she does. Stuff like that builds up over time. And like, it's kind of insulting to your viewers to think that they wouldn't notice. And I don't like it when people say they're using filters. Sorry, they're not using filters and they are. It's going to change how the makeup looks. So if you're thinking that it's, if you're thinking like on TikTok, there's a like probably 20% beauty filter on this. But I'm not going to say, like, if, if, it, if this was my foundation product, I'm not going to say, look how beautiful this product is and not disclose that I've also got, like, a beauty filter on low. Because then you might think that it looks better than it actually does. I mean, the foundation does look nice, but you know what I mean? It just comes down to, like, the people that watch your videos are real people and they're spending their real money. And like, she should know, you know, she should still know the value of money. It wasn't that long ago that she was doing her own, like she was working in retail or whatever. I wonder what her reasoning was behind using the falsies. I think it's probably just to, okay, if I was going to do that, what would my reasoning be? I would do that if I wanted to create a dramatic before and after. And the reason I wanted to do that is so that the video performs well and gets more engagement. And the reason I want to do that is because it's a sponsored video and I want the brand to be happy because they've obviously paid me to do, to do the content. Yeah, because I know if, if a brand, like when a brand comes to you and wants to sponsor you, like they're investing in you. And if the content doesn't perform well, they're not gonna reinvest, they're not gonna invest in you again. And you know the funny thing, I don't know if it's changed now because my channel stats are different, but when I was at like the number one beauty influencer in Australia, like I had the, like, the top performing channel, my videos were getting so many views, I, was not even earning that much money. Like I was earning probably crap all from sponsorships. Like view, like ad revenue was high, but um, from like sponsorships because because I was I had so many views, my engagement was so good, my rates were so high that a lot of brands, especially back then, because no one wanted to work with influencers, my rates were so high that a lot of brands couldn't actually afford me. So it's like it's a it, it's kind of double edged sword. And that's why a lot of these big influencers, like I think about like Emma Chamberlain, you know, well, she's kind of an exception to the rule. She's got lots of like fashion houses and stuff. Like she's kind of the unicorn of the industry. But think about Michaela, she would, her rates would be so high 
but it's only massive brands like L'Oreal or like even yeah just those huge brands that um could afford to pay her rates so I guess if you finally do get one of those brands coming and working with you you don't want to disappoint them but I mean that that could be different now it's probably different now because her rates would be in the oh like surely for a TikTok video it would be it would not be cheaper than like 50 grand surely uh I don't know I have no idea at all, at all. that's just a completely random number I threw out there but like considering how huge her platform is I would be surprised if it was less than that and yeah the reality of it is is that not a lot of brands can afford that I feel bad for her because it's she's being treated like she's killed someone but I mean what do you ex it's kind of like I don't know I go back and forth between feeling I feel bad because people are piling on like I think she gets it I think she gets it she probably got it on the first day within one hour. Like now it's been like just strung out. But then I yeah, but then I go back and I think, but like, what did you expect was gonna happen? What did you expect was gonna happen? Did you genuinely think people were going not going to notice? The culture has changed so much since the good old days. Yeah, I know. Pfft. This is what concerns me, Hun Bun. I'm ashamed to say I watched the video 20 times and I can't see falsies. Does this make me a hypocrite by saying everyone's talking about it and I'm here talking about it? But I'm, but I'm not saying, oh, I mean, you know what? It probably does make me a hypocrite, let's be honest. Um, this is what concerns me. And I was talking about this to the um, makeup artist and photographer last week. I'm going to get some concealer. The fact that when I was researching large face products and just what products are popular in, in the market and what products I want to come out with and just all, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I was looking at mascara advertisements i think and i found all these pictures of mascara campaigns like before and afters from every major brand you can think of this is the hourglass <laughs> hourglass vanish stick in birch no it's not the vanish stick it's just the vanish concealer i don't even know what it's called with the mascara they would apply either the makeup artist said that they, they either put the mascara on and then apply like individual little lashes to fill out the model's lashes or and this is what I noticed they go in on in Photoshop afterwards and they get like a brush tool that is basically just a single hair a single eyelash I should say and they just place single eyelashes in the gaps and on the bottom lashes and to me it was super obvious because there is like thick beautiful tapered lashes and you can see them in amongst the natural lashes and so I was like, wow, this is so obvious. That's, that is literally false advertising because you're saying that you will achieve that outcome from using this mascara when that didn't actually occur. Like you can't achieve that because they had to use a combination of... Anyway, so I posted this to my stories and I said, can you guys see the Photoshop? Like, can you see the fake eyelashes? And so many people couldn't, couldn't see them. And I thought, damn... Like, I think, like, surely they can't get away with this. They can't, they can't get away with it. And they do, because people don't know what they're looking for. People just assume, like, you'll just assume that a brand would have a conscience and wouldn't be, like, selling you something that is basically impossible to achieve um, just using the mascara alone. But, yeah, people, people don't notice. And same thing with, I think it was, yeah, you said um, that you didn't notice. Yeah, you can't see the falsies. That's what, that's what concerns me because there's so many people that are now going to buy that product thinking that they're going to achieve, like, this incredible transformation and they're not going to and then they're going to be disappointed. But then I think, oh, man, I don't know. Because I also wonder that with fast fashion brands, like, what was an example? Like, a pretty little thing even still around. I think they closed down in Australia, but I think the models are wearing the clothes and because of the lighting and the stylist styling the clothes and sometimes they've even got clips in the back of the clothes to like cinch in the waist and do all these things that, and then like, I guess because you, you can't see the, the fabric properly, I think sure, like the, the clothes look amazing on the website, but then you get them, not all brands, but you know, some of the worst, worst offenders. And then you get them and they look completely different. And I think, so yeah, sure, you've been able to sell the clothes um, more successfully because the photography is great. But then aren't you inevitably just going to get a whole lot of returns because people are going to get it in, in person and be like, oh, this looks nothing like it. And then you're just wasting money on having to return. Like, doesn't it always shoot you in the foot? 
So same thing with uh, like using a mascara and then sorry using falsies. Aren't you inevitably going to get people that are coming back to your channel and saying like, I use this mascara and like I didn't get those results. But there's huge legalities around all of that. Yeah, I saw on t uh, t uh, God, there's so many platforms started with T slash there's only two. <laughs> um, uh, Twitter, a lawyer weighed in and basically said that she violated a lot of the FTC laws, even with her disclosure of the ad. Like she put in really small text, paid L'Oreal Paris partner or something on the video, and then it disappeared really quickly. Um, and then it was... She put L'Oreal Paris partner at the end of her hashtags and someone said, yeah, but she, she put it there. Like she technically, she did what she needed to. And then he replied and said, there was a law lawsuit around from a lawsuit with the brand Teamy. I don't know how, I don't know what that brand is. And um, they did the same thing where they put the sponsorship disclosure at the end of the caption where you have to, like, after the, the more, like, you have to press more in order to see it. And um, they lost because the judge ruled that it's kind of too inconspicuous. So it's interesting. And then, yeah, the fact that she, what did he say? He's like, she was in disbelief at the before and after or, like, the transformation, but... Technically, she, she, her demonstration of the product wasn't accurate. Accurate? Because she used, I don't know, something like that. And I was like, I just, it just sucks. And yeah, I've seen like lots of YouTubers talking about it and saying like, the ones that I kind of stay watching rather than the, uh, I'm just bitching about it, are the ones that are just kind of like, it just puts a bad name on influencers in general. Because most people already think like, every, like, influencers are the butt of all jokes. Like, let's be real. <laughs> And I get it. I get it. Some of them, I'll stop there. But, you know, <laughs> there are some cringy things about it. Like, yeah, some of us, not the greatest example of influencers, I don't know. Um, yeah, it just creates that dis distrust, which is really what we don't need already. But I just thought she would have been smarter than that. That's what it comes down to. And don't you feel guilty? Ah! Don't you feel guilty? I'd be crapping my... I, I'm going to be careful, careful what I say on TikTok because they're sensitive. I'd be extremely nervous <laughs> if I posted that, hoping like... Hopefully no one notices. Uh, yeah, people make mistakes and she hasn't killed anybody. Exactly. That, that's why like the pylon has been ex excessive. She has obviously... She would have learned her lesson, surely. I'm really curious what her explanation is. Like how she, ha I'm so curious how she's going to handle it or how she's going to explain it. I guess she's in talks with like public, like a PR team and L'Oreal are probably finding the best way to um, handle it. It's, you know what the, the sad part about it all is? That Michaela's getting like all of the blame and L'Oreal is getting all of the benefit. Like she probably just, unless she's getting some kind of like commission or bonus or something, if she reads a certain amount of sales, that's the hard thing is that like, yeah, she, L'Oreal reaps all the reward and granted it was a sponsored post. So they probably paid like tens of thousands of dollars for the, for the post, but she's the one that has to clean up the mess, but she's, she's the one that made the mess. So <laughs> it's a weird situation. Ooh, shall I apply some cream blush? I never do that, but. Shall I? I shall. First thing I found in my drawer, a Fenty. Have I used this before? Unused. <laughs> Petal Poppin. Yeah, Ali, like she knows she's on the internet, right? In 2023, such a risk to lie to her audience knowing what online culture is like. Also just a bad thing to do, of course. Yeah, like consumers, are so aware of everything, 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 as they should be, as they should be, but yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, when is deception ever a good idea? Do you think Michaela will ever come back from this, or do you think she'll be cancelled? Oh, she'll definitely come back again. Like she made a stupid, <laughs> she made a stupid mistake. She wasn't like hating on minority groups or something <laughs> like that. Like she just made a really, just a poor decision. <sighs> Even people that have done really horrible things never get cancelled. Does anyone ever get cancelled completely? I feel like anyone can come back. This is not showing up on my skin. Ah. Uh. Very subtly. Would they have asked her to wear the fake lashes or would it have been her making that decision, I wonder? Oh, this is nice. I don't know, I've had brands ask me not to use the paid product tool because it affects engagement. And I said to my manager, I don't feel comfortable doing that. <laughs> first of all, because I feel like, not first of all, Mainly because, like, I would have, like, you would have used the, you would have said ad. Like, I would have disclosed that it was paid, but not the, like, actual tool they were asking me to do because, yeah, it affects, affects engagement. I'm like, well, I don't know if that's actually proven. I think that's been debunked. But also, I think people just don't engage in sponsored content all the time because they can see that they can tell that it's sponsored. And then things like this whole mascara gate thing just, you know, make it even worse. Um, but I just said no because it's like, if, like I'm the one that probably gets in trouble if I don't use it and I want to disclose that I'm like I want to probably properly disclose it that's what the tools for so brands are still definitely like a lot of brands don't want you to to use it because it you know could affect the, could affect the engagement but I don't know I just don't think it's worth the risk and I really think a lot of yeah that's what like what like platforms have said they don't shadow ban sponsored content I think it's just like if if I'm and yeah if I'm like so here's two different ways of showing you a product. This is the unsponsored way. Okay, so I'm just using like the Fenty um, powder and then this is in the shade butter and then I apply it to my face and then I use the next product. That's, or if I love, you know, if I particularly love this product, I'm using the Fenty powder. Um, oh, this is like my favorite powder. It mattifies my face. It does this, does that. It's my favorite, blah, blah, blah. And then you talk about why, why you love it so much and just in passing. And then you might be talking about other stuff. I might talk about another brand in the same sentence. Like, oh, I also love the, um, I don't know, Kosas baked powder, whatever this is called as well. If it was sponsored, I wouldn't be allowed to talk about this in the same, um, like you can't talk about competing products. So I wouldn't mention this. So this gets exclusivity. And it also be saying like, I'm using the Fenty Beauty and then you say the full name properly. You talk about all of its ingredients and benefits and it's like, you know, a lot more um, in depth. It's a lot more, there's not necessarily a script, but they, you know, there's, there's points that you need to mention about the benefits. You know, if I might have this special ingredient in it that does this or uh, it's, you know, cruelty free or it's this or it's that or how what it does to your skin and blah, 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 blah. So it's a lot more like, it comes across as a lot, lot less natural because you're, you know, you're, you're touching on talking points, which makes sense because if a brand is paying you to promote something, you'd want to be able to like communicate all of it. You know, it needs to be worthwhile. It needs to be worthwhile for the brand. Anyway, so if you're scrolling and you see me like this, you can tell it's sponsored. Does it? Does that mean that what I'm saying is not true? No, because if you're a decent human being influencer you only promote products that you genuinely love but it's just the nature of the differences in formats and how you like how, you, how you're sharing it with your audience that people can tell so no it's not about like oh the engagement is low i mean i mean look i don't work for instagram maybe there is something some kind of truth to that but i don't really think there is so maybe she felt pressured to uh, i don't know so if i turn my lights off You still can't see it very well. I love these lights. I even put them on when I'm not when I'm not streaming. I'm just working. I feel like it's, I don't know, just the the, the light just makes me feel, makes me it's somehow makes it easy for me to focus. I'm gonna build this up a little bit because I feel like it's not obvious enough. It's gonna look crazy in person, but that's alright. Doesn't Laura have to approve the video? Not sure how the process works. Yes, but as I was talking about this with the shoot people, like. A lot of the people that work, oh, although, so they'd be dealing with like, you know, L'Oreal would have their own marketing department. And so the people that are doing this, uh, that are approving the video, probably have no, they're not like makeup artists. They're not, 
they don't have the eye to notice these things. They don't have the eye to just to, I mean, they should be able to notice that, but because they don't, there's less skin in the game for them because it's like they're just the brand and Michaela's the one that's delivering the content so she's gonna get all the hate anyway. Oh, I would have loved to know how that, yeah, I would have loved to have known. Hmm. Is it true influencers are paid to give negative reviews to push down competitors as long as it isn't slanderous or defamatory because you hide under the guise of it just doesn't work for me? Whoa. Wow. I've never been approached by a brand to do that. So I don't know personally. That's juicy if that's true. That's some like next level <laughs> marketing. That makes sense though, but then don't you still have to say it's a, it's a sponsored video? So would you, so say if like one brand sponsored me to, I'm just using the Kosas uh, cloud set in Aerie for my under eyes. So I would, so the brand would say, oh, I want you to promote this powder. I want you to promote this powder. Um, and also, <laughs> Is it like, is it just, ex I wonder if it's exclusively talking badly about the other products. Like, do you have to mention the, the brand that's sponsoring the video? Because you still have to disclose it as sponsors. So then if you're, if you're just talking bad about some random brand and then it's like sponsored by the competitor, you'd be like, hmm. Unless the influence is also doing a sketchy one and they're, um, <laughs> they're just not disclosing it. I think it's good that there's been this big recent crackdown in Australia of influencers not disclosing. I mean, I saw that drama on, what uh, platform was it? You know, um, uh, what's her name? Michaela. Oh, a different Michaela. <laughs> Michaela Tester. And um, that girl that called her fat in real life or something, which is unbelievably disgusting. Well, then I saw all these like gossip videos and I don't know if this is true. I mean, I saw the screenshots, but like, I don't know if it's been confirmed or not. So allegedly. <laughs> She was talking to another influencer and the other influencer, so this girl, I think her name starts with K. I don't know what the rest of her name is. The girl starting with K who works with White Fox Boutique, she was talking to someone who wanted to work for White Fox Boutique and I think she was asking tips on what to do. But I think she didn't have enough female followers on Instagram because she posts a lot of bikini content. That's also the downside to posting that kind of content on Instagram is that, yeah, you get great engagement, but it's the wrong kind of engagement because brands, when they see your analytics, they're going to be like, we've got this beauty product or this fashion brand. You've got like a super engaged audience, but they're all men. So, and they're not going to buy our product. So we're going to, we're going to save our money and spend it with someone, spend it on someone who has a largely female following. Um, and the person starting with K admitted, literally admitted this, so callous, um, that she gives, that she sent allegedly White Fox Boutique screenshots of her partner's analytics because he has more female followers than she does. So she sent someone else's analytics to the brand <laughs> um, but so that so basically White Fox Boutique were being duped that entire time thinking that they were advertising to a larger female follower base and they actually were. Granted they've dropped her since um, and they worked with Michaela on a campaign which was just really cute. Just the 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 balls to do that is wild. I just can't imagine doing that. Like, yeah, I know it's a brand and it's like not like a, you know, it's not like a person you're ripping off, but that's still an Australian brand. They're still own like, yeah, they might be making a lot of money, but like it isn't, you're not talking about like, you know, Kmart or something or something massive. It's still like, a, it's still Australian people. It's Australian girl that owns it. I think with her partner. Just gross. <laughs> so greedy. Allegedly. Brands now have sophisticated technology that allows them to see if content has been if, if someone's followers are fake, never bought a follower in my entire life. Don't plan to. Lots of brands do. Because you see a brand that has like heaps of followers and has no engagement. And granted, like just because you have a lot of followers doesn't mean you have a lot of engagement. Like my channel, my Instagram was started ages ago. So my engagement does not match the amount of followers that I have. But like some of these brands, it's next level bad. Like they have like 
half a million followers and get like two comments on their posts. Um, because when you go on, onto their page, onto their Instagram, like if, if you haven't ever heard of this brand before and you go onto their Instagram and they've got all these followers, you're like, oh, wow, it must be like a really good established brand that people love. Whereas if you've got like no followers, it kind of makes them, I guess, have doubts. And I know that's true for me. If I look, when we were, when we were furniture shopping and a random brand would show up on um, Facebook, my, my, like my Facebook ads, I'd Google the, no, I'd search the brand on Instagram and they'd have a lot of followers, but like they're, um, let's say they might have like 50,000 followers, but their account was only created very recently. And I know like I'm, I'm an influencer with like an already large following and even lounge face has like, I don't even know how many followers we have, like 10,000 and something, I think I don't, I'm not even sure. Was it, is it 10,000 or is it more than that? And that's been like with me promoting, like it takes a long time to build up because people don't necessarily follow brands unless it's there's something in it for them like you know discount codes or like makeup lessons or things like that whereas my Los Curtis home account that's got like 50,000 something followers in probably the same amount of time because you're getting something out of it like you're, you know you're, you're following along something that you're interested in which is like the building and the, uh, the build process of a house and like furnishing and gardening and stuff like that so when you see a brand with like billions of followers I always think Sorry, I didn't even show what I was using. This is the Hourglass um, Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Nude Bronze Light. Do I still use the L'Oreal Foundation I used to use years ago? No, because they're not uh, cruelty free. You are the superior makeup artist. Too much nostalgia. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Um, does anyone know... If Jacqueline, I don't follow her on Instagram. I don't follow many influencers, but does anyone know what, if she ended up addressing what is happening with her brand, if anything is happening, or is it all just like business as usual? Hourglass Ambient Strobe Lighting Powder in Incandescent Strobe Light. This is good if you are fair like me. And it's, I don't like glittery highlights. I'm very close to the microphone, sorry guys. Now I've got to do my brows, but I can't use lounge face products, as you all know. I don't think she has said anything about the cozy situation. I don't know the full story on what, what was going on there. Maybe we should get that payout from Morphe and then just take the brand like in-house or something. There was another influencer brand called Cozy before Jack. Oh, uh, but I mean, I'm sure Jacqueline would have done like trademark searches and stuff. And if it wasn't trademarked, then I guess that's the hard, hard part. That's why I've trademarked Lounge Face. Like even though it's a weird name and I don't think anyone would ever try and copy it, it just prevents anything like that from happening in the future. And I mean, a name like Cozy, you would have assumed that someone else has named their brand. Like that's a, it's not, it's, it isn't a, um, a unique name. So I'm sure she would have known that like someone else would have had it. Surely. It wasn't trademarked. The smaller influencer tried reaching out to Jacqueline prior to the brand being fully released. And apparently it was a very shady situation. There have been comments all over Jacqueline's Cozy Insta asking her to address it. Nothing for quite some time now. Man, oh, all this drama is so <laughs> stressful. How do these people do it? How do they, how do you do it? I get stressed if I get one comment that says I, that, that I, if, if, if someone said that I used it, mean, this hasn't happened, but if someone did say that I used a term that was like offensive or something I didn't realize, again, this hasn't happened. I, I would lose sleep over that. I don't know how people like, so exhausting. My stress would be like, yikes. I wonder why she hasn't addressed it. Especially if all the comments are there. Did she just not read the comments? Apparently the smaller influencer was selling cups, homewares, etc. And Jacqueline's excuse is that it's not loungewear, so it's different business. I feel like Jacqueline's trying not to address anything. Oh, she did. Well, she's definitely not if she hasn't addressed it yet. She was liking comments when people said the above. Wouldn't that be the same thing as people patenting technology though? I always think I'm, I'm pronouncing that word wrong. Patent is like patent leather, right? I always have to remind myself, patent is like paid. Paid for patent. Is that right, patent? Um, technology that you kind of need to make sure it's yours publicly. Yeah, and to be fair, okay, to be, look, look, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I'm not like Team Jacqueline or anything, but if you have a brand that's called Cozy, like Cozy, it's the word Cozy, but spelled different, like 
It isn't a unique word. It's not like a unique name. It's a different spelling of crazy. And you haven't trademarked it, which may actually be difficult because the name is so generic. And you're selling something that is unrelated to sleepwear and loungewear or whatever Jacqueline sells, uh, like blankets and stuff. I don't even know. I think the people that are outraged about it are probably the people that already hate Jacqueline and it's just another thing that they can go crazy about. What do you, what do you guys think? How long have you and Reese been together now? Uh, we met in the end of 2014 and officially dating the start of 2015. So how many years that is? Eight? I'm inclined to agree with you there about the, yeah, Peyton stuff. Also, hello. Hello. I agree. People love to hate her. I feel like if Jacqueline actually put out a statement, it'd be seen less sketchy to me, but I don't know. Totally agree. Totally agree with that. But it's not her fault. People really dump on her. Yeah. Like, come on, guys. Do we all really think she purposely put hairs in lipsticks? Ah! I filmed a video about this back when it all happened and I was going to upload it, but then I was like, I'm not getting involved in someone else's drama. I'm not, I'm not starting, I'm not fighting someone else's fight. And I deleted it. I didn't even upload it, but I was like, come on. Yeah, you can say that she handled it poorly. Sure, I'll give you that. But do you really think, do you know how much money she would have lost? Like, it's not even, sure, she would have made a lot of money if she sold them all. She refunded all of them. I mean, I guess the manufacturer probably would have reimbursed her for the cost of everything because it like it was their fault that they had the stuff had the hair in it, or the little fuzzies in it. Um, and so she lost she she was in that situation because of them. So perhaps she didn't lose. But then like even shipping and stuff she would have paid for and the the, the shipping company is not gonna reimburse you the money because they did they did their job. It hasn't whether or not the product was faulty has nothing to do with them. So probably like tens of thousands of orders shipping Oh my god. You gotta be kidding. She would not it wasn't purpose. You think she's trying to like ruin her own brand? Come on. Yeah. People just generally generally hate her. So I think they're gonna find anything. So I think this is the same kind of situation. But again, sounds like she's really badly handling it, which is her downfall, which gives fuel to the fire for the people that already hate her. You know? I just generally hate cancel culture of not giving people grace anymore. Yeah. Exactly. It's tough. I see both sides. It's just bizarre that she hasn't said anything about it. That is bizarre. And really, come on. You've got, you've got to know. You've got to learn from your mistakes. And she's made a few, so surely you would have learned by now. Yeah, I think she said how she lost money on that, for sure. She pushed so hard against it at the time, though, and I think it put a bad taste in her mouth regarding put a bad taste in her mouth regarding lipsticks. Yeah, <laughs> excuse the pun. Yeah, Jacqueline's personally personality slash response to things just seems to put people off. Yeah, okay. I think the situation of damned if you do, damned if you don't. I think that's what I'm gonna do with my streams more now is just get ready with me type videos. Reese and I are both on the same page. We both don't want kids. Both on the exact same page. Thank God. Be so sad if you weren't. That'll be hard. Your hair looks really healthy. What shampoo and conditioner do you use? Ah, <laughs> well, well, I use sun silk. <laughs> Using Lunch Face Lash, my mascara. Yeah, when I went, when I went, tried to clean out my makeup stash, the easiest way for me to do it was to get rid of everything that wasn't cruelty free. I mean, I'm not saying that like you have to do that because you, you know you might still use those products. But for me, that was the easiest way to do it, to downsize. Because that way it's like, it's so hard when you're going through your stash and you, you're reminded all the beautiful colors and the beautiful packaging. You're like, oh yeah, I should keep that. It's like, if it's not cruelty free, then I can just instantly say, well, too bad. Someone else will use it. And I don't just put it in the bin unless I know that the product is definitely old. I had some people asking me to send me all of their like, cause I was saying that I was, I did a video on YouTube where I was putting it all in the bin cause it was old makeup. And people were like, no, I'll take it. I'm like, I'm not going to send you my crusty old makeup. And you shouldn't want to receive my crusty old makeup. What if you got an eye infection? Ew. Oh, good eyelash day. Lounge face lash. Vegan tubing mascara. Cruelty free. Mega volume. God, I love this mascara. Lounge face lash. Ch tubing mascara is different to normal mascara. So normal mascara is like pigments. Black pigments. And so you're coating your lashes in these pigments, whereas tubing is like little rubbery, it's, they're, it's polymer based, so little polymers. And they basically coat your lashes like a little glove 
whereas traditional mascara is just like a black pigment or whatever color the mascara is a pigment so when that pigment reaches touches your skin if you've got oily skin or even just not normal skin if it's humid if you've you know been crying or something those pigments will just wash off in like a cloud of black whereas tubing mascara um it comes off in like whole tubes and it's not cloudy it's not ashy doesn't smudge it never smudges because of the little tubes once you've tried this kind of mascara you won't go back i always make sure i get the backs of my lashes too because that kind of defines the tips of them and then i use the wand the tip of the wand to kind of concentrate the product on the very tip of the wand uh in the inner corner area so that's the wand there we go What was the mascara called? Lounge Face Lash. 